Hello and welcome to National Park Wild. I'm Eric, and while most of the best national parks are in the western United States, this video I will be ranking the Midwest National Parks, giving some love to the less talked about ones. For those who do not know, the parks I will be considering are those in Missouri, Ohio, Indiana, Arkansas, the Dakotas, Michigan, and Minnesota. Also, before we begin, subscribe to the channel so you know a new National Park hunt second comes out, and be sure to check out tons of other videos that are already on the channel. There are several other major rankings, and I hope you enjoy those. Let's begin. Number 9 is Gateway Arch National Park in Missouri. A very common pick to be last in this type of list. I do enjoy it. I find the arch to be an impressive structure, and the ride up is an engineering marvel, and I enjoy the History Museum. However, compared to other national parks, it doesn't really have what I think makes a great national park. It's pleasant, but it's not nature-focused, and I'd say it's kind of a sore thumb compared to the rest. Number 8 is Indiana Dunes National Park in Illinois. I'm of course kidding, it's Indiana, but okay. So Indiana Dunes National Park is one that some very much enjoy, but others seem to think does not deserve park status. I do lean toward the latter. It has its nice scenery. There's some interesting geology with these dunes, honestly. There are some pleasant forests and beach hikes and all. And it's interesting to see the Chicago skyline, I guess. It is a beautiful skyline for sure. The one thing is that I just feel this park is still nice nature, but definitely smaller scale. And it doesn't have quite as much nature to it given the steel mill and a few other things. That said, be sure to check out the surrounding area because there are a few really nice places to watch sunrise and sunset. Number 7 is Cuyahoga Valley National Park in Ohio. This one, I think is a step up from Indiana Dunes primarily for the ledges and Brandywine Falls, but it isn't a similar boat, it's not necessarily a top tier national park, it's very close to the bottom for me overall, and while I enjoy my time there, there is some decent wildlife and all, I think it is a little more of a national recreation area type thing than a national park. Still appealing, and still enjoyable, but not really a top national park by any means for me. Number 6 is Hot Springs National Park in Arkansas. This one's kind of overhated, I know many who would put this in very last place, but I don't know, I think there's a lot of pretty solid nature here. Balance Rock, Goat Rock, Gulf of Gorge, they're all beautiful areas. The tourist town of Hot Springs itself does kind of bring things down, but from the campground, to the wildlife, to the scenic drive, to some of the hikes, this is a very nice national park, and honestly, I enjoy my time here even if it's kind of teetering on that doesn't deserve status. Top 5. Number 5 is Wind Cave National Park in South Dakota. Wind Cave is strongest for its wildlife. I enjoy the bison and prairie dogs especially. They're some of my favorite animals, and I enjoy seeing them in the park for sure. That said, scenery-wise, it's not really a standout. There is certainly some very nice stuff, such as the cave formations known as boxwork and frostwork. Those are unique. You don't really see those in other national parks, such as Mammoth Cave or Carlsbad Caverns. That said, the grand stalactite and stalagmite-filled rooms of those aforementioned parks I find more impressive than Wind Cave. To Wind Cave's credit, one thing I love about this one more than possibly any other national park on this list with one exception, is history. There's something very fascinating about the way this cave came to be, and I was hooked by every word the tour guide said. I enjoy the cave formations, above ground the wildlife is the star, scenery is not necessarily a top thing here, but it is still a pretty nice place to spend time, but be sure to check out the rest of the Black Hills area while you're in South Dakota. Number 4 is Voyagers National Park in Minnesota. This one is a fisherman's or snowshoers or winter sports person's dream. I'm not really super into any of these things, but I do like this park a lot. I enjoyed boating around for a pretty long time when I was at this park, and being on the water is a highlight. You can see bald eagles very often. Some of the rocky shorelines and the abundant trees are very impressive to look at, and it's a very quiet and tranquil place. 
So there's something quite magical about boating around Voyagers. That said, going on land is not quite as fun. What stands out here is that the trails do not really bring you to particularly impressive scenery for the most part, but they do have probably the worst bugs of any national park. A combination of flies, mosquitoes, and ticks. The abundance of ticks, something that is actually something you'd expect obviously to an extent, but is much worse than you would see most people on the internet saying. So take it from me. There are a lot of trails that you do not want to spend very much time on or be really somehow careful when you're near grass or trees because ticks will come on you. That said, Voyagers, other than that, is a great park. Number three is Badlands National Park in South Dakota. One I can easily see being number one on the list for many people. And while I enjoy it, the one thing that holds it back a little bit is the way the interstate runs right next to the main formations. The fact that you have a fairly major road right next to it, and it can be seen from several trails in the park, makes this one seem less wild than the top two. And being a very wild and somewhat different primitive experience is a huge standout for the top two, and I'll get to that. But the highlights of Badlands are the interesting and colorful formations that make the Badlands, of course. And trails such as Notch and Castle really allow you to explore on your own. There's also decent wildlife, from bighorn sheep to bison, though I will admit I have not seen prairie dogs or bison in this particular park. And I enjoy my time at Badlands. It was one of my first national parks, and I always enjoy a trip back. Number two is Isle Royale National Park in Michigan. This one could also be number one for many. I think if you are a serious backpacker, it could definitely be. And I have hiked quite a few days here now, and as of my most recent experiences and thoughts, I feel that this park does not have mind-blowing scenery the way I feel number one does, and I'll get to that. But there's quite a bit to love. Stoll Trail gives my favorite views because of the rocky coastlines, and it's just a fascinating sight. Wildlife such as moose is a very interesting thing to see on an island like this. And the park is fairly quiet, though actually it got a lot more crowded when I went in 2021, and I feel that that's kind of continued to be a thing to some extent. It's not quite as quiet as it used to be. But I very much enjoy Isle Royale National Park, and I've now gone fairly far into the island, and while I've not done the entire Greenstone Ridge, I'm sure if I did, things could change on the list. But actually, it may not, because while Isle Royale is wonderful, number one is Theodore Roosevelt National Park in North Dakota, which I think is a massive jump from Isle Royale. In terms of my rankings of these 62 national parks I've been to, I would say Theodore Roosevelt is probably close to 30 spots ahead of Isle Royale. Maybe more like 25, but nonetheless, it is a massively underrated park. The formations here are kind of like Badlands, but they're larger, more rounded, more colorful, and vary in shape a lot more, in a way that makes them feel a bit more like a somewhat lush version of Utah National Parks. There's a lot of nice prairie and forest as well. The wildlife here is easily my favorite of any of the national parks on this list. I've seen bison, prairie dogs, elk, wild horses, deer, and much more. Cottonwood Campground, though, is probably the highlight experience. This is my single favorite place I've ever spent a night in in the US. Just kind of being in a place not far from Medora, but other than that, very quiet, with the stars above you, right along the little Missouri River, with some of the largest and most impressive Badlands formations not too far away from there, and a chance at being greeted by wildlife. I adore a night at Cottonwood Campground. And another huge plus is this is the most secluded of any national park I've been to of this list. When I went, I kid you not, I did not see a single other car on the scenic drive the entire time I was there. The only places I did see them were the campgrounds and visitor centers. So overall, Theodore Roosevelt, I think, if it's not in your bucket list for the U.S. national parks, it should be. 
I don't mean to hype it up too much because I don't want people to be disappointed when they go. But I feel it's a park that absolutely blew me away. And it's one of the most wonderful experiences I've ever had. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Comment down below your thoughts. Subscribe for more National Park content. I'll see you next time.